Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I wanted to talk about what your OC says about you because I've noticed some interesting correlations between different types of OCs and different types of people, and basically I wanted to make a video about it. Just to be clear, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody or say anything is bad in this video. I know you probably already know that, but I just wanted to mention it straight up. Um, okay, anyway, let's get into the video. So first up is the like emo furry OC. Now just to be clear, I'm not talking about fursonas or furries in general. In fact, most furries are not uh, in this variety necessarily. They're usually a lot more bright colors and stuff like this. This is specifically the type of like wolf or cat furry um, who is really like emo or goth sort of aesthetic. They usually have like lots of piercings um, and they're usually either like black and red or black and pink or something like that. Um, I have seen so many of these OCs in my day. Um, <laughs> I especially love when they have like an emo haircut in their fur um even though like they don't really have hair it just ends up being more of their fur i just think it's so cute um and uh honestly i'm i'm pretty dog water at drawing furries so just use your imagination where you, where you need to but uh basically the type of people who have these sorts of OCs are usually pretty young um and usually they are people who would really like to dress more like emo or alternative themselves but are basically limited to going to the edgiest clothing pieces from um Ross Dress for Less or something like that and trying to get those like clip-in hair extensions that you can get from like Hot Topic. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that people who have this type of OC are often really into like warrior cats and stuff like that. Um, they got into like the furry fandom in sort of a very like literary angle um, rather than directly from the internet and usually their um, OCs have super tragic backstories. Um, they have like very complex relationships with other characters in their pack um, and you might just find them with really dramatic like anime scars on their eyes or heterochromia. Um, usually these OCs get kind of looked down on in the art community but I think that that is absolutely insane because this is where a lot of the best artists on the internet started. Um, so yeah, <laughs> all the more respect to the emo furry OC. Speaking of tragic backstories, I've noticed another trend with OCs, and this one is truly crazy. Um, I would just describe it as the punching bag OC, I guess. Uh, this is a type of original character. Uh, they can be really any type of character. They can be old or young. Um, they could be a boy or a girl or non-binary. It doesn't matter. The point is that all they do is suffer. All they do is experience physical and psychological trauma in every scenario that their creator puts them in. And honestly, you would think that someone who has an OC like this is just a total sadist, um, but that's not necessarily what I've seen. Um, and you'd be surprised how much of a trend this truly is. Um, but anytime you're seeing someone who's drawing their character constantly with like bandages all over their face or constantly like crying hysterically, they're probably a punching bag OC. Uh, every piece of their narrative is just making things worse for them. Um, so the type of people that I've noticed having this OC type um, are mostly the sort of like reserved kind of artists. Um, usually they at least had a BL phase at one point in their life. I think this trend kind of originates from there. Um, and I think that they're the type to like definitely drink like energy drinks or coffee even though they have like a pretty clear like anxiety problem so they're just like constantly shaking because too much caffeine or anxiety or whatever um honestly i can relate with that a lot um and they're definitely going to be the types who don't want to show their sketchbook to you um they're just really <laughs> self-conscious about what they're drawing not because they're insecure of their skill but they don't want you to think that they're total psychos for drawing their characters um, all beat up all the time. Um, and generally, yeah, it seems like they might be going through something. Um, not that that's necessarily related to uh, their character getting all beat up, but it just seems to be a bit of a correlation. Anyway, I hope if you have this type of OC that you're doing okay and that you don't drink too much coffee instead of water. Take care of yourself. And take care of your OC. They deserve at least one nice day. 
Next up is the handsome high fantasy guy. Um, this is usually a trend that I see with people who are either really into like Game of Thrones and stuff like that, but more so really into D&D &D and generally like people who are really into the more geeky of the hobbies, the geek sort of angle of art, and they always have the most beautiful um, OCs. Uh, that have like these very aesthetically pleasing horns and this very elaborate sort of like Dorian Gray style outfits, all these flowing tunics that remind you of like Howl from Howl's Moving Castle. Um, I think I'm not much of a D&D girl myself, but I believe that a lot of people's uh, OCs in this sort of uh, line are usually like tieflings or something like that. Um, they just have like these very elegant horns um, and it just makes them look really unique from other non-high fantasy OCs of course. Now I find the type of person with this type of OC, they're generally like very wholesome, very cute, um, just like nice people in general, and they have so much information about their character. It's not unusual for someone to be kind of obsessed with their OC and really care about like a lot of the little details, but the like D and D type high fantasy people know so much information about like the past, present, and future of their characters. It's truly astounding, and I feel like no other OC creator really gets on that level. Um, they're also likely to be really voracious readers, um, and they probably are really into like quote unquote ugly animals. So if you have this type of OC, you probably also really like frogs and you probably really like snails and really any type of animal that gets a bad reputation. Unlike a lot of people with sort of like beautiful boy OCs, they're actually not that interested in their romantic lives and are more just interested in structuring their past, which I think is really interesting. Next up might be weirdly like niche and specific, but I swear this is like a real trend. So this is the like, like hot anime girl with short hair who's like kind of a tomboy and she like swears and like talks about memes and stuff. That sounds so specific, but I swear, like if you look around on Newgrounds for long enough or you know enough uh, like dudes in particular, this is a very common OC for like guys I've noticed, like guy artists. Um, <laughs> I guess it's just like, like, I don't know, like a modernized, like sort of Deadpool adjacent cute anime girl. And for some reason they always have short hair. I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, but basically, um, I just really wanted to set, design her with the, the body type that, I, that I'm that i usually seeing on these, uh, these anime characters. Uh, usually they have like a crazy tiny waist and then like big ol' juicy legs. <laughs> Um, which is interesting because you don't always see that necessarily in anime, but it seems like this anime styled OC ends up with this sort of these proportions, this sort of body shape a lot. Um, and usually they have like blue hair or something like that. I don't see like a lot of pink necessarily, but it's usually like a non-natural color, like almost always. Um, I also gave her some guns because, you know, sometimes uh, the fixation is girls with guns, um, so I threw that in there as well. Um, and generally the type of dude who has this um, OC, uh, they're usually like gamers, they're like into anime low-key. They probably watched at least one shonen anime that really touched their hearts and got them into anime forever, um, but they're not going to be the type of anime fan that's like so deep in it that they're like watching all of the new season or whatever. They're just sort of like casually interested in it and that ended up being the style that they like to draw in. Um, and they definitely try to downplay how much they like their OC and how much they actually care about the storyline and stuff by just acting like she's cute or whatever. Um, but secretly they actually really care about their character and I think that that's really sweet. Last up for this video, at least, um, I want to talk about the quote-unquote self-insert OC. This isn't like a true self-insert. I, I guess a real self-insert would have to be in like sort of a longer piece of fiction, but this is more about the like pseudo persona that's like not exactly the artist, but is also kind of the artist, if that makes sense. Um, so basically this is the type of OC that's like kind of like an idealized version of the artist. They're usually like more outgoing and more confident than the artist themselves and usually they just have sort of like an exaggerated um, sort of image 
to the one that the artist actually puts out there. So for example, if the artist has a stripe of colored hair or something in their hair, their character will probably have their whole head uniformly dyed that color or some sort of like more committal version of that like cosmetic change. Um, usually these characters are like yeah, just generally more idealized versions of the artist, so they could be like taller or whatever beauty standard the artist feels like they're not uh, sort of reaching up to, their character will um, rise to meet that. And honestly, I feel like these types of characters get such a bad rap. Honestly, I don't get it. Um, I think that they're really interesting and I think that they tell you a lot. They communicate a lot about the artists themselves and how they feel. Um, so I think that as art, it really works, um, but I digress. So the type of person who usually has this sort of OC, um, a lot of in like internet creators have, have these sorts of OCs um, and also just people who feel like in some small way that they're not measuring up, um, which is always really sad because these are usually people who actually have a lot going for them, but they just don't have the confidence to really um, know that about themselves. They usually have very rich imaginations. They probably imagine entire like scenarios and music videos every time they listen to music by themselves. And um, generally they're just really wholesome and cute. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, this is just for fun. It's not meant of to be a critique of anybody, um, but let me know three facts about your OC. Um, I love hearing about your guys' creations and everything. I think that like characters are the coolest, I guess <laughs> that makes sense. I'm a character designer, but still. Um, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much to my patrons, including Rylan, Kadaria, Something Super, Deadly Nightshade, Maria Vasquez, Astral Fox Art, Middle Z, Alcapa, Lilia Lur, The Expressive Poker Face, Marissi Axolotl, Chris Draws, Kai Kizer, Subaki, Snow White, The Becky, Liliana Hammond, Mia Lavali, Angel File, Cutie Pie, Nicole Ludwak, Nicolette Queen, Rainwater Pearls, Ice Cream Pal, Lion, Olaria Louie, Nora Cornelson, Cola, Rachel Singh, Yaboyas T, JJ Jade, and of course, blah 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 blah.